if you make art and you want to make your art into prints with a standard half inch border in some standard sizes using Photoshop, here's how you do it. So for me, every print starts with a photograph because I work on a stretched canvas. I like to get my photos in full sun with the best camera I have possible and before I varnish them to avoid extra glare. Then we're going to crop it in Photoshop with the perspective crop tool. This helps you to get it to be a perfect flat square with right angles. If your photo wasn't taken completely straight on, which it often isn't because I'm avoiding glare outside, I'm just adjusting to each of the corners. Then when you click that check, ta-da, it's completely flat and that's so much easier. Because I have a canvas that's stretched, sometimes the edges show a little bit of that curvature and I don't want to take out extra amount of painting at all if I can avoid it. So I go in with the healing brush tool to just touch up those edges. And then it's time to do our editing. We want to do it in the camera raw filter on Photoshop um, rather than adding different layers of editing on top. This helps just give it a more professional edit. When you're editing, it's important to turn the brightness down on your computer to a lower amount if you're making it for print material. I always found when I first started making prints that it would come out a lot darker than I intended because I didn't do this. And your photographs or your prints are not gonna shine. The lens correction step is next. This is to get rid of this thing called chromatic aberration. So if you zoom in to the points where there's a high contrast edge, you sometimes can see a little like red halo or a pink halo around a certain side. And by adjusting this, you can get rid of that issue. And then it's time for spot healing. This is sometimes a super lengthy process because there are a lot of imperfections on a painting that you don't really want to come through on a print. A lot of little glare and spots and shine marks or maybe a part where the paint shows a little white through and we just don't really want that on the print. So you just go in with that spot healing tool and remove any unwanted texture like I'm doing here. It's so satisfying, but it also takes so, so long to get rid of all those imperfections. So I'm just gonna speed it up for you here. Sometimes this takes up to like two hours of just like doing dot after dot, but it's always so worth it to do as much spot healing as possible to avoid having to use extra digital drawing on top of your prints. So then once I've done all the touch-ups I feel like I can do, and there's still some glare in some larger areas, a little bit too big for the touch-up tool, we're gonna use our brush tool. And we wanna set it on a low opacity and a medium hardness to try and retain as much of the texture as we can so it doesn't look airbrushed and totally different from the rest of the canvas. We just want it to be a little darker in some areas that got washed out by the glare when we took our photo. Now it's time for our border. Disclaimer, this way is simpler right now because this print is square. If you skip ahead, I do an example of rectangular print because there is another step to get the size correct before we add our border. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down to canvas size. And it's time for a little bit of math. We wanna check this relative box because we are adding to our frame. So let's review what we're trying to do. We wanna have a half inch border all the way around our print no matter the size. That means one inch per side gone, but we don't know how many pixels that means because our image pixels are always changing. So when we use an eight by eight print, that means it's actually going to be a seven by seven image and our ratio is gonna be seven over eight. That represents the section that is the actual image, whereas one minus that represents the extra space for our border. If we take our pixel dimensions times this ratio, that tells us the amount we need to add for each side. 
And there's always going to be a little rounding errors with pixels because they're so small and they use whole numbers. So if we take our number of pixels, we multiply it by that ratio, that gives us how much we need to add. Remember, we have that relative checked. Then we're ready to add a new fill layer to fill in that empty space we just created. And I like to use F5, F5, F5 for my ideal off-white hex code. And then I place that layer behind and we've created the border we want. If you'd like to do a darker border, I like 1B, 1B, 1B for the matte black version. Now, if your print is rectangular, I guess we will do that now. So we've already completed all of our editing and color adjusting and lighting. We are ready to change it to the correct proportions. So we're going to go to canvas size, uncheck that relative button because we want to adjust, not add. And then we're going to change it to inches. And remember, our outer dimensions are 12 by 24 for this print, which means our inner dimensions are going to be 11 by 23. We want to make it bigger because we don't want to crop out anything. So we're just going to multiply by 10 to keep it easy. So we're going to go 110 by 230. And that you can see in the little image down there means we're going to get bigger on all sides. And that's what we want. So it's going to look a little bit like this. And that's just what we want because we're going to crop it in but keep those proportions. We need to hold shift as we drag our frame in to constrain the proportions that's really important that's why we figured everything out that we just did is to keep it in the correct proportions and i like to do this rather than cropping out sections of the painting because i don't want to lose part of the painting i like to use the magic photoshop tools by selecting the area that is a little extra border and we're going to use this thing called it's called content aware fill and it's actually magic but it does have some errors, so we have to go in and adjust ourselves when it gets a little bit confused. Does amazing things, but it's not perfect. Okay, and now we're ready to add our border on. So we want to check that relative box back on because we are adding for this width. We know that we have the ratio of 11 over 12 for the width and 23 over 24 for the height. And we can multiply by that added border ratio. Since our border is supposed to be half inch all around, we know that the 1 12th of the width is going to be very similar to the 1 24th of the height. And we can check that by multiplying by each of those decimals. And you'll see for the top we got 309 ish, and for the height there we got 323. It might seem pretty off, but with pixels it's actually very, very close. So we just picked something in the middle around 315, and that's going to be just all right. Then we're going to add a new layer like we did before, set it up to be off-white with the hex code F5, 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 put it to the background, and there we have our half-inch border. Yay! If you stuck around and listened this far, I appreciate you. Here is a little cheat sheet of those standard sizes and those decimals that you would multiply by. And if you want to see how my prints come out, I have all my prints available on my website at Butler. Dot art. You can see all of the prints I just had display recently at the Toronto Artist Project there, and I use this method for all of those prints, so you know they're high quality. You can check it out on my website, katiebutler.art.